Hello, Nathan Graham, Harvesting Specialist for Case IH Axial Flow Combines. Today we are going to go through the setup and operation of the Harvest Command Automated Combine. You will see the Harvest Command Automated Harvesting System is designed to be easy to set up and use in the field. Let's get started. To engage Harvest Command, toggle the switch in the overhead panel. Harvest Command is active when the 1 changes to an A inside of this threshing icon on the Pro 700 monitor. Some of you may see an H in the threshing symbol. This means you are in headland mode, an option within Harvest Command. Now with Automation active, press the back tab, taking us to the main menu, and select Automation. It is here that I will do my basic setup to run automation while harvesting. We need to set up some parameters in the basic tab. First, select crop type. In this case, it's going to be wheat. Next, let's move to the strategy that Harvest Command will operate in. If you are familiar with feed rate control, you will remember there were three strategies we could choose from, performance, maximum throughput, and fixed throughput. Now that Harvest Command is active, a fourth strategy is available, grain quality. Since Harvest Command is utilizing a camera, we can now see the quality of the grain and material other than grain going into the tank. Let's quickly go through the four strategies we have here. Selecting performance will equalize combine performance using losses, throughput, and grain quality where losses are prioritized over quality. 95% of operators will be using performance. Selecting max throughput will increase throughput based on speed and engine load regardless of loss or grain quality. Selecting fixed throughput enables the combine to vary the ground speed to maintain an established target throughput or bushels per hour. Selecting grain quality means grain quality is a priority. Grain quality is prioritized over the losses. As a reminder, Pressing the blue I button provides a description of each of these four strategies. Once the strategy is selected, and I'm going to pick performance, which is where most folks will be, choose the maximum speed. Select the speed 1 to 1.5 miles per hour greater than the normal harvest speed, giving the system the ability to harvest faster in lighter areas of the field, increasing productivity if the combine load will allow it. Now, determine the maximum engine load. This setting should run anywhere between 90 to 100% for best fuel efficiency and to utilize the engine's torque curve most effectively. Ultimately, the choice is yours. Now that we've made those selections, we can go to the field and harvest. To fine tune Harvest Command more, go to the Advanced tab where you can make some other decisions. The first option is Initial Settings. You will have the choice of either Current Settings or Automatic Settings. We recommend using Auto, or if the combine is already operating at an acceptable level to you, choose Current Settings. From here, move on to Adjust Frequency. Medium is a good place to start. Select High in a field that varies greatly from pass to pass, and Low if the field is uniform and consistent. The next choice will be Threshing Condition. We recommend starting with Easy Threshing which will give the system the most latitude to make changes. As an example, and let's focus only on rotor cage vanes, if I select hard threshing, the rotor cage vanes will lean towards a slower setting and not deviate much from there. Easy threshing will allow full movement of those same cage vanes, allowing the most productivity and throughput. We can also choose the maximum rotor speed. This setting will be used if experiencing grain or straw quality issues and you want to limit the rotor speed based on your experiences and field conditions. Again, if you need more information on what each of these settings can do, simply press the blue eye to get a definition of each setting. I also want to point out the reset automation button. This button can be used to reset all data points automation has been using over time to start over. Maybe we have an operator that hasn't followed the commandments of setting sensitivities, causing automation to perform below expectations. Pushing the reset button will allow that errant input to be cleared. So, we have made our selections and now we are harvesting in the field. Let's engage feed rate, which will control the forward speed. 
Press the feed rate button on the handle for two seconds. An hourglass will appear. Then the feed rate icon will become darkened, showing that it's engaged. Move the handle all the way forward. The current speed and your selected target speed will be shown. It's going to take a couple minutes for the system to stabilize and learn the conditions and what it needs to do to meet your expectations. When unloading on the go, as soon as I engage the unloading system, the forward speed will freeze and remain fixed. I can cancel out a feed rate by pulling back on the handle, regaining control of the forward speed. If at any time while feed rate is enabled, and I want to change the speed settings without going into the Pro 700 monitor, I can simply press the shift button on the back of the handle and header up for increased speed or header down for decrease speed as conditions dictate. When harvesting, Harvest Command gives you the ability to fine tune the system based on what you are seeing in the field. Fine tuning the system is as simple as adjusting the sensitivities. This step is important as it gives the system your feedback on the job it's doing and where it can improve. Let's see how we do this. When on the Run 1 screen and to the bottom, we see these funnels are a bit different. Instead of three funnels, we now have five giving us different information. From the left, rotor losses, grain quality, sieve losses, material other than grain, and tailings volume. Harvest Command will try to maintain a funnel fill of 75%. When we tap on the funnel, a pop-up window will appear, providing an easy way to quantify what is seen during a loss check behind the combine, a kill stall, or looking in the grain tank. As an example, looking in the grain tank, and I see too much chaff and stems, tap on the material other than grain funnel and tap too much. The same is true if a loss check is conducted behind the combine and there are not many kernels on the ground. I may decide to select more is allowed to increase machine throughput. There are some important things to note when adjusting the sensitivities for harvest command. In general, a lower sensitivity allows automation to run in a wider range of conditions before taking actions, while higher sensitivity will make adjustments more frequently. Always adjust one sensitivity at a time for the most accurate result. The order of adjusting sensitivities for the best results are, first, the rotor, second, sieves, and third, grain quality and or material other than grain. Do not adjust sensitivities when you are sitting still or not harvesting. It is important to be in the same harvesting conditions as when the checks were made. There are two best methods to accomplish this. First, you can stop the machine, conduct your checks, resume harvesting, and go for a minute or so before making adjustments to sensitivities, ensuring the same conditions. Or, to make immediate adjustments after you conduct your loss check, Open the sensitivity pop-up window before you slow down to a stop. This will essentially freeze the recorded harvesting data. You can now conduct your checks, re-enter the cab, and make your selections based on what you saw. You will also have the ability to select unthreshed within the pop-up windows. Select this if you see unthreshed grain behind the combine. And most important, repeat your loss checks. Since sensitivities have been changed, you need to check the impact of the change made, which may now be acceptable or require further fine tuning based on your expectations. Now that losses are acceptable, let's continue fine tuning our system with grain quality and material other than grain. We are going to observe the grain looking for cracked or damaged kernels and material other than grain and make selections in the pop-up window based on what we see. As mentioned earlier, Harvest Command is designed to be easy to set up and easy to use. With just a few selections, we can be harvesting in the field with good results. But the ability to easily fine-tune the system based on field conditions and your expectations really sets Harvest Command apart from the competition. Remember, 
your operator's manual is a great resource for further information. I'm Nathan Graham with Case IH. Thank you for watching.